Hi Mel, this is Michael from BetterTwoFulScores.com and finally you have reached your magic number of 26 on the speaking section of the TOEFL exam. My goodness, uh, you actually got 28, so you exceeded your goal by two points. Let's take a look at your email that you sent me yesterday. We've been working together now for several months. Uh, it was a very tough road, very tough. Let's look at the email you wrote me first, and then when we get to the end of it, for my YouTube audience and also for you, you can see your improvements, uh, I'm going to play your last speaking practice test and the feedback I gave you. So everybody who's at YouTube, you can see that this student got 28 on the speaking section. What does it sound like to have 28? So you say in the email, Michael, well, it's done. I have received my results this night and I got reading 29, listening 24, writing 25, and finally <laughs> speaking 28. I am more than happy. I'm thrilled, grateful of having you brought some kind of magic on my path. I have worked intensively. It's true, but you pushed me. You told me the truth since the beginning. Your exact words I remember were, it's going to be a tough road, and it was. But I got the scores that I needed, 106 out of 120. And I got to overall 28 in the speaking. I needed at least 83. Uh, out of 120, at least 26 out of 30 in the speaking. Because of having worked almost every day and of having private courses every Friday with you and because of all the feedback you gave me every day, I have succeeded in improving my language use, my pronunciation, and God knows how I needed it. Not only for the TOEFL, but for my future life in the U.S., for my future job. Everything was on the line here for you. Everything, everything. Your humanity, your kindness, and your honesty are precious, and you helped me to keep up since last year. It took me nine months to succeed, but it was worth it and necessary. There's always some kind of hidden reason, but we realize it later. I want to know, I want to know to anyone uh, struggling with TOEFL, don't give up because I'm French. And as Michael told me since the beginning, it is harder for French people to get a good score on the speaking section. But instead of discouraging me, it has given me some strength and determination. So if I succeed, anyone can. Good luck to everyone. Michael, thank you for everything. You are an excellent teacher and coach. I will see you on Zoom in our private lessons for the next step, of course. So grateful and happy. This is incredible. Nine months of just, you were so diligent in completing your assignments. Uh, I told you to work on different kinds of language use areas, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation. You did all of your studies. You are very diligent. A teacher is only as good as his student, and you are a very incredibly a talented young woman and a great student. I'm telling you, I wish you the best of luck. You can now realize your goal of moving to the United States, right? And, and becoming a nurse in New York City. This is fantastic. You could not do any of this. You couldn't start your process until you got your TOEFL score. Now you have your TOEFL score. Finally, you have what you need to move on with your life. Mel, it has been my pleasure. It has been my joy to be able to work with you for these nine months. You are an inspiration absolutely to anybody in this world, anybody who hears my voice right now. If you put your mind to it, if you have a good study plan, if you work hard and execute that plan, if you do the practice, you will reach your TOEFL score. You can do this. Mel said it. If she can do it, you can do it. We can do this. Everybody can do this. So Mel, thank you so much for your email. It's, uh, I just want to say congratulations to you. It has been my honor and privilege, as I said before, and uh, good luck to you in your future. 
and uh, I will always remember you for the rest of my life. If you ever come to California, right, if you end up out here, you might be at a nursing conference or something in Los Angeles, let me know. Uh, we can have dinner or something. I'd love to see you to say hi, uh, and thank you so much for your words of encouragement. I am so happy for your success. Okay, Mel, so here is your, I think this is the the actual last practice test you have done uh, right before scoring 28. I think you you went from 22 points on the speaking, then you went to 24, then to 25, and then after, the, after that exam, uh, you completed this practice test. And this is, for anybody at YouTube, this is one of her practice tests to give you an idea. She went from 25 points to 28 points, and this is her speaking fluency. Here we go, Mel. Let's listen to it one more time. How does it feel to be done with your speaking practice? Wow, my goodness. Okay, here we go. So the... The question here is, some students like to make an outline of their writing assignments before they begin the first draft. Others prefer uh, to write the first draft immediately without any uh, planning at all. Uh, which do you prefer and why? So we're going to see. Okay, here we go. I'm ready. Okay, so we have the, the speaking rubrics here. Okay, here we go. To me, it's a no-brainer since I have always made an outline of my writing assignments as a student. First of okay, let's go back to that again. I think the first word is no-brainer. I think you probably pronounce that a little more clearly. To me, it's a no-brainer since I have always made an outline of my writing assignments as a student. Let's say as a student. Let's go back to what you just said there of my writing assignments as a student as a student as a as a as a student so that's called linking right so i'm just kind of taking some notes here so you can probably work on your linking a little bit more within your thought groups first of all having an outline before writing down the real work makes me more efficient for instance the real what the, the real what now Having an outline before writing down the real rock makes me more efficient. For instance, the real rock. Now, I, I think you want to say before writing a rough draft. I don't know about rock. I think that's the wrong word or words there. So I would say before writing a rough draft. That's what I would say there. So that goes to language use. When I was a student in high school, I had this history teacher always asking me to make my assignment, but without an outline. And I remember struggling a lot because I can't... I remember str struggling. You had problems with the vowel and that word. Just writing down all the things spontaneously, so it was very difficult for me. I've done all those things continuously, so you have a word stress problem with that multisyllabic word there. Contin continuously. Secondly, it gives me a core, a structure. Again, I remember I used to have. Instead of saying it, maybe say making the outline gives me a core structure. This outline for all the fields of today except history, and it helps me a lot to. Yeah, I like how you refer back to that history assignment even when you give the next reason because that shows progression of ideas so that's a good strategy write all my paragraphs one by one let me go back to the and that's it mel so that's one of the last speaking practices you did uh before completing the toefl exam and getting your magical score of 28. anybody at youtube there it is you can see that her speaking wasn't perfect. She had a few minor problems with either word choice, some problems with word stress, maybe some problems with linking. Nevertheless, Mel, you did it. Despite any problems you might have, you, you got 28 out of 30 in the speaking, and that is a very, very strong score for you. So congratulations on that. I hope everybody at YouTube enjoyed this video.
Make a comment below if you want.